Hi everyone, I'm Zhong Yu. I'm going to present our work where we develop a diverse and robust bipedal locomotion policy that can walk, turn, and squat using parameterized reinforcement learning. This is a teamwork with Shishin, Jason, and Glenn, and they were advised by Koshio, Sergey, and Peter. This is our previous hybrid zero dynamics based variable walking height controller for a 3D bipedal robot Cassie. This is developed based on a model based controller from Michigan. So, in this controller, we firstly obtain a gate library using robots dynamics offline. Then online, we obtain the reference gate from the library with respect to the robot current, sagittal and the lateral walking speeds and the walking height. In order to check desired walking velocity and walking height, we have a PD based gate regulators to generate offsets to the reference motions. Then we send the desired motor positions to the joint level PD controllers to generate motor talks. Moreover, different gates in different walking heights may require different PD gains. Therefore, we have a gain scheduling module that they utilize a lookup table to adjust the PD gains with respect to the desired walking height. So as you can see that this controllers requires lots of parameters tuning, not only in simulation, but in the real world. Moreover, CASI is a highly nonlinear, high dimensional system. Using a PD based gate regulators may not be sufficient and this will limit what the robot can do. So how to address these issues? In this paper, we propose to use reinforcement learning that the leverage robots full order dynamics to obtain a nonlinear controller for CASI. This is the proposed controller. This controller is represented by a neural network with two hidden fully connected layers and each one has 512 hyperbolic tension units. This policy directly outputs 10 dimensional desired motor positions for the robot. And the outputs are passed to a low pass filters and used in the joint level PD controllers to generate the motor talks. The input of these systems have four parts. The first is the command, which includes the desired frontal and the lateral walking speed, walking height, and turning your rate. The second one is the reference motion de decoded from the gate library with respect to the desired walking velocity and walking height. This gate library is the same one used in our previous work. Please note that the reference motion has no information about the turning yaw. We encourage the agent to infer the turning motion outside of the reference motion by the training routine. The third and the fourth parts are the short history of the policy outputs and observed robot states. These are the input and outputs of the system to control with, respectively. By combining these two inputs, this policy is able to identify the dynamics of the entire system. This is the key for us to do the, to do the thing to real transfer. Our RIO-based policy runs at 30 Hertz and the low level PD controllers runs at 2K Hertz. And this method is able to use the full order dynamics of the robot offline and thus shows quite robust behaviors such as this algebra recovery. Moreover, this requires no gain tuning on hardware and in exchange, we tune reward function in simulation. So this is our reward function. We encourage the agent, which is the CASI, to mimic the reference motions while checking the commands and reducing the impact forces and the motor talks. In each episode, we also randomly change the command every eight seconds. So this will encourage the agent to also learn how to transit from one gate to another. So in order to improve the robustness of the policy and to bridge, to bridge the gap between the simulation and the real world, the dynamics of the environment is randomized during the training in simulation. Using dynamics randomizations, we want to address three major sources of the uncertainty in the environment. The first is the modeling error. We randomize the link mass, link mass center, joint damping ratio, the ground friction ratio in each episode. And we also add sensor noise and simulate the communication delay between the policy and the joint level controllers in each time step. So we train our agent by PPO, where we run policy to generate samples and then feed the value functions. And this is utilized to improve the policy while staying close to the previous one. So during training, the dynamic randomization is introduced gradually through a curriculum. Basically, over the course of the first 2K iterations, the range of the randomized dynamics parameters are linearly expanded from a fixed default values to the maximum ranges. So such curriculums help to prevent the policy from adopting excessively conservative suboptimal behaviors, such as simply standing in place. As you can see that 
the, the yellow curve is the one with curriculums, and the you know the green curve is the is the learning curve without curriculums. So the the without curriculums, it can the policy can learn very slow and comp without in not that good return. So the working policy is trained in, in the matricular simulations with domain randomizations, and the later tested extensively on MATLAB Simulink, with, which is a high fidelity simulated environment. And finally, the policy is deployed on hardware and validated in the real world. So this is our results. Our policy works as the first time we deployed it on the real world without any tuning. And our policy is able to reliably control the robot to check different commands, such as forward walking, you know, walking sideways, and changing walking height and walking on the different walking heights. So in these experiments, with, there are two malfunctioning motors on the robot. They are the right rotation motors and the right knee motors. They produce larger friction than the left one, but our policy is able to adapt to this because we randomize the joint damping ratio during the training. And they also recover to a normal height. And this is the turning your experiments. So you can see that the, uh, the leash is actually jacking the robot, but the robot can maintain stability. And we also did some outdoor experiments. So here are some fast recovery from a low walking height to a normal height. And walking forwards. And turn. <clears throat> and faster walking. So our policy also show great robustness on the random but persistent perturbations from different directions. So in this case, we perturb the robot legs. And this, in this case, we push the robots you know, from sideways. And the policy also shows sophisticated recovery from sleep when the robot steps on the Genshin. So this clip is actually my favorite. The robot step on the Genshin at the most fall down. But the robot utilized the leash, which is jacking it, to recover. So this is actually very like our human beings when we lose balance and someone besides us give us a hand to help us to recover to the stability. Since we also randomize a ground friction in the, in the training, our policy is, is also robust to the ground friction changes. And also, the, ro the robot can stay robust to the unknown load while jacking the Genshin. Because there's no one pushing the uh, gantries for the robot. Moreover, in the MATLAB Simulink, we let the robot to follow the backwards walking speed at the minus one meter per second while having 0.85 walking height. The proposed, the proposed learning based controllers is able to follow this command while having small checking errors. But our previous hybrid zero dynamic space controllers caused the robot to fall down in this case. So this is because that the backwards walking is more challenging. So actually, this is only one testing case, and we test entire range of the commands in Simulink. And the yellow points is the feasible commands from RIO-based controllers, and the blue one is, the, is from the baseline controllers. And our proposed learning-based controller can produce four times larger feasible command set than the baseline with better checking performance, which means that our policy is more powerful and can handle more scenarios. So I move, as I mentioned, there are two malfunctioning motors during our experiments on the RL controllers. So this is how the baseline work controller work properly before. And, but after the right knee motors produce larger friction than the left one, the same controller with the same gains cannot let the robot to get up because the right leg is weaker than the left one. But using our IO-based controllers, even being deployed on the robot with two malfunctioning motors, the robot can succeed in the same scenarios 
So this is because that we randomly exchange damping ratio during training, and all policy is able to capture this modeling error and adapt to it. And also, you may also notice that the robot tries to lean to the left to have more weight on the stronger left to help itself to get up. So in conclusion, we develop a versatile working policy that they use deep reinforcement learning to enable the 3D biped robot Cassie to work while following commands for the frontal and the lateral working speed, working height, and the turning your weight, just using one single policy. And our controller shows considerable robustness by two methods. First, we combine a hybrid zero dynamic space gate, gate, gate library to enable the agent to train on diverse collections of motions and the transitions among them. So this brings the robustness to the perturbations. Second, we use the domain randomizations and combine the feedback of the system input and output to improve the robustness to the modeling error and the environmental changes. Finally, I think this is one of the first time that an IO-based working policy shows a very clear benefit over a model-based working controls. But actually, the common reason for all of these advantages is that the RAL can leverage the full order dynamics of the lag systems and to produce more agile behaviors. So in the last, I would like to show some failing cases where I pushed the robot too hard and I shot the robot computer while doing experiments using these RAL-based controls. Okay, thank you. This is all the material that I want to share.